Hey guys, welcome out to Baker Street Geekery. I'm Watson. Today I'm all alone, but that's okay. You're just going to have to deal with me rambling. Uh, I've been gone for a while, mainly because I've been sick. I've also been kind of out of town a little bit, uh, doing some stuff. But then I've finally got off my lazy butt and decided to record something. So here we go. Let's talk about the pilot's love song. Man. Man, oh man. Can you talk about being really dark all of a sudden? Everyone's dropping like flies. So we got like Midi died, Wolf died, Marco died, uh, and the jerk hole blonde kid Fausto died, but he died defending Ela, so I guess I can feel sorry for him even though he's a total jerk and aristocrat stupid head. Everyone, apparently everyone in the forums on Hummingbird was saying that, like, uh, they saw that the show was pointing out that, uh, Mitty was gonna die the whole time, but that, that entire episode that, that was going on, I thought they were pointing to Chiharu dying, not Mitty. Which, <clears throat> I, I don't know. Good for you guys. I picked up the wrong thing. This episode got really good with the action. Uh, the there was some cool trench warfare, and Ignacio finally did something. Instead of being, you know, mopey and all by his lonesome off in a corner somewhere. There was some cool air fights, too. But <laughs> the entire thing also had, like, Looney Tunes-style airplane sound effects. <laughs> it was kind of distracting. But, uh, it was still really good looking. I kind of wish they would do more of that, and they're probably going to. Uh, eventually, closer to the end, probably. I don't know. But, I, I still got, I, I got a problem with the series, because... <sighs> Claire's Nina Viento. Kal-El has, fall, has fallen for her. But, in the end, you know it's going to happen that they're going to find out who each other is. And it's going to be really stupid and contrived and just like, Oh, you're not who I thought you were. Oh, I'm going to hate you now because you, I can't, how could I love you? You killed my mom and stuff. And it's going to be really dumb when they do that. Everyone knows it's coming. Everyone just, I just wish this plot twist wasn't a thing. There's other ways to tell a love story without, in a fantasy world, with French-style rebellions, with extremely subtle Spanish-titled figureheads. It's dumb, it's cliche, and it's a disappointment. And all of this awesomeness that happened this episode is going to be all for naught because it's going to be really dumb later. But I can't stop watching it. It's just so much fun. <laughs> I just... Uh, you know what? When it happens, it happens. But until then... I'm still going to enjoy it for what it is. I don't want it to be dumb and cliche. I just want it... To be good. <laughs> and it's going to... Uh, whatever. It is what it is. And that's enough for me. It's fun. It's good. Uh, let's let's move to something else. Like uh, Samurai Flamenco had, uh, it had one episode of realism, and then it went back to being s insane. <laughs> it, one episode of whatever his name is. Let's Flamenco just. Want, talking to the guy he saved in the park right before all the right before guillotine gorilla showed up and so seeing that how he has made a difference and that how he should just go to the people that he knows will help him because they're his friends and he should go and then it follows up with the the prime minister just being like oh, I've got to have all the ratings because I've got a power suit that's, that's that's powered by ratings, and if I get 100% ratings, I can rule. I just, just, just I could be the best and stuff. 
And so, of course, Samurai Film make him take him, takes him down to, like, 1% rating, because you can't have 100% ratings, you can't have 0% ratings, someone's always gonna, you can't, there's always gonna be at least one person who likes him. But it turns out that Mr. Justice wasn't Mr. Justice, he was an alien. Alien Flamenco. <laughs> <laughs> and on top of this, the Prime Minister was powering up the suit so he could fight the alien flamenco. Because he's the only world leader left who isn't an alien. And it ends on a giant ship hovering over Japan. And, ugh, there hasn't been an episode since. And that happened like a week ago. Maybe two weeks ago. Was there a new episode? I'm gonna check. Because I don't remember seeing it. Let's see. No, there wasn't. Uh, so, I really liked it when the show was kind of real and just being a guy <clears throat> wandering around town saving people just because. Because he wanted to make a difference. And now it's even more crazy than it was. <laughs> and I know everyone's saying that this is... He's going to wake up out of a massive coma, but if they do that, that's a huge cop-out, and that'd be even dumber than the <laughs> amazingly over-the-top ridiculousness that they've been doing for the majority of the show. If they go back now, it'd be real dumb. But I can't help enjoying it. It's just so dumb. <laughs> that I it's, it's so good. <laughs> It's yeah. So you should you should watch it because it's <laughs> there is no level to this which this anime will not go to. It will be whatever the hell it wants to be, and no one can tell it to be otherwise. <laughs> and that's what you that's what I've come to expect with this. And <laughs> oh man, it's it's so good. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh oh, Log Horizon happened that it was finally showed why Rundle House Code was looking like he was dying in the opening. Because he almost did, because as was hinted at earlier when he couldn't be added to a friend list, he's a people of the land. He's not he's not an adventurer. So he almost died in the goblin attack. But then Shiro comes in and actually uses his scribe skill, which which I totally thought was going to be useless. But of course, the show proved me, proved me wrong that he wrote up a contract using the rarest paper and the rarest ink that made Rundle House Code become an adventurer. That's his subclass now. So there's a new subclass that only one person has. Uh, so then he wakes up in the... Cathedral back in, uh, what is it? It's not Akihabara. No, that's the real one. Akibahara. That's it. Akibahara. And Missy Seuss is there, and he just slap. She just slaps him because he's like, "What if you died for real? Then I would lose you forever. You're my BFF. They're my OTP. I'm not. I'm not ashamed to say it. They are my OTP. If I would ever write fan fiction, I would write about them because they're so adorable together. Uh, and then. Next episode, there was like five time skips in one episode. It was kind of weird, silly, but it happened. They're at a ball after the goblin attack because they saved everybody. Hooray! And Shiro's just walking around trying to avoid being part of the party, and he runs into a lady telling a story to some people of the land children. And she tells the story of Shiro A making an, the magic that turns Rundle House Code into an adventurer. And that's kind of weird. No one was told that he told the peop the kids that were there that they're not they shouldn't tell anyone about this world magic that he was about to do. How does this lady know? And then he goes to the wizard guy who told him about world class magic and he said well, there was this lighter on the horizon I saw once. I think someone else made some world-class magic some little time ago. So clearly, someone 
has made world-class magic to either make them a mod of the game or just to have all knowing knowledge of everything that's happening which technically would make them a mod but you know so it's turning out the show's getting really good from what it started out with <laughs> it was it was good from episode two or three whenever they met up with Nyanta in the other city and they kicked ass that's when it started getting good for me but now it's getting really really good because they're going into things that things like Sword Art Online couldn't go into and I mean that's what this show was to me it was just another Sword Art clone but the way they built this up it's so different and it's so its own thing that I it's really really good <laughs> Everyone should watch this because it's better than the second half of Sword Art, at least. But watch Log Horizon. It's good. You should watch it. Go watch it. Uh, that's all I'm going to talk about today. But uh, if you want, if you enjoyed my little rambling about stuff, you can give a comment about what you are watching this season, what you think I should be watching this season. I'm definitely watching a lot, <coughs> and uh, I might be watching it, but we'll talk about those in another video. Uh, if you liked my rambling, you could uh, you could like, and you could also you know uh, subscribe so you'll never miss another one episode of me rambling about you know anime, because that's what I do here, talk about anime. Uh, so yeah. I'm Watson, this has been Baker Street Geekery, see you next time.